So greetings from Pennsylvania once again. Yeah, here we are. The start of our Union Canal series. So I am at the confluence of the Schuylkill and the Topohocken Rivers right now. And this is where the Union Canal would have started. Here in Reading, kind of busy, a lot of road traffic. Let me just throw up a map, show you exactly where I am right here at the moment. All right, so right here is the Schuylkill River. You can kind of see a, a, a dam up there, railroad bridge. And here it comes out, empties into the Schuylkill River right here. That's headed downstream. I believe that's route, that's Highway 422 down there, I believe. Or it might be 222, but anyway. And the uh, Schuylkill River continues on up, up this way. I think on maps, this is called the Confluence Park. Just up that way is Stone Cliff Recreation Center. And if you keep, keep on going, you'll get to Grings Mill. So that's where we're at. So what's the plan for today? Well, I parked down at Grings Mill, maybe one and a half miles back that way. So we're gonna try and cover locks 53 through 50 today. And uh, 53 would be across the the way over there, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get over there, and I don't really know if there's anything left of Lock 53, and in, and in some literature it's not even referred to as Lock 53, it's referred to as the, the guard lock or the toll lock. There, there would have been a toll house over here too, at the start of the canal, because you had to pay to use the canal, so the, the initial lock allowing you into the canal would be like the guard lock or the toll lock. There would have been other buildings there too, where the, the uh, one of the lock houses, but yeah, I don't think we're going to get... I brought my wellies along, if you want to call them that. But we're not crossing the Topohawk in here. Maybe up further I could, we'll see. But I'm kind of... Let me turn you around, but I'm kind of doubting there's maybe much left over there anymore. Yeah, so down this way, like right here's the Topohawk, and the canal would have been on that side of the creek. Going along there, but there's a modern highway right there, which pretty much destroys any evidence of the lock. In fact, our next lock, lock number 52, is just on this side of the railroad bridge. I don't think there's anything left of that either. So, yeah, and I'm looking across. I don't know that I really see anything, but I kind of would like to get over there sometime. But I don't know, because you see that little, that's, that's built up right there. That's the highway right up there. So there's probably nothing left over there. And I'm not really sure how to, I'm not sure of any easy way to get over there. Except to get a get a kayak back here somehow, because this highway just snakes all along there. There's nowhere to park. Maybe we'll try that sometime—a kayaking adventure in the spring. See if there is anything over there. But I kind of doubt it. So yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm not thinking we're getting over there today. We'll see. I don't know if there's a way across up there, but I figured this would happen. But I wanted to come down here anyway. This is where it starts. You know, the curiosity, the curiosity in me wants to get over there just to make sure there isn't any remnants at all. But I had to come here. I was here years ago, but I kind of forgot what it looked like right here. So now I know. Yes, once again, like I said, somewhere over there, maybe in some of that brush, there might be some remains, but I don't know. But I think our only way to find that out is to get a kayak back here someday, maybe in the spring. Have a look. All right, but we're gonna head back up the trail here. Um, yeah, there's a dam up here. I'm not sure, I, there's a possibility we might be able to get across, but we'll see. Let's head back up. Like I said, the canal did run on that side of the river, the south side of the river for now. Eventually up here, it did cross the river. And interestingly enough, you know, this is the Schuylkill River, so the Schuylkill Canal would have come up this way too. This, this depression here looks almost like it would have been a canal at one point. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up that map again and show you the locations of where the locks are and where, what my path, what the canal path is for this section of the Union Canal. So we were just down there, 
Now we're coming up to like a paved trail. This is the uh, Schuylkill River Trail, AKA the Union Canal Towpath Trail. However, the towpath was not on this side of the Tolpakken at this point. There are some interesting features here, non-Union Canal related, and lots of graffiti. We are in Reading, at least the outskirts here. And up here's that dam too. Not sure what all this was. But here's that, like an old smokestack. All kinds of equipment down there. Yeah, tons of graffiti. Welcome to Reading. Yeah, check that out. Up there's the dam. Yeah, I believe this is called the Bouchon Dam. I think you can see it on the map that I threw up. I think there's some kind of mill here too then. Alright, so back there is the way we came from. Here is the railroad bridge. And lock number 52 it's across the creek over there somewhere. But you see the modern highway, that's the, uh, what they call it, the West Shore Bypass. And that is like almost right next to the creek, so I highly doubt there's anything left of Lock 52. I mean, it's remotely possible that there might be something left of it, but I doubt it. When they do that highway construction, bike it's completely obliterated. But when I, if I do, well, I want to get across the river there to see if there's anything left of you know, the, the initial lock, lock 53. Maybe I could walk up that side a little bit see, to see if there's anything there. Like I said, not today. But I want to hustle out of this area. This area makes me a little nervous. I've explored back this way in the past. You, know, you come across like homeless camps and stuff back here. So, not that all homeless people are bad, but sometimes desperate people do desperate things, and I'm alone carrying an expensive camera. So, I think we'll scooch on out of this area. So, that's 53 and 52. And if you're, you know, if you're watching this video first and you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say locks and stuff, you can watch the intro video to this series which will be in a playlist in my playlist section yeah so this is called stone cliff park here i have a map here actually so yeah right there is confluence point park so that's where we were um we're making our way up this way we're actually right here the recreation area so the canal would have been here right here is where 53 would have been roughly right here's that railroad bridge the lock 52 is about right there but you can see that modern highway just probably obliterate it because they got the little entrance ramps and stuff. So yeah, we went up this way, the canal. And right here is where the canal crossed the river. There was like a, oops, if I point my camera right, it's like an old, remnants of an old mule bridge which took the canal to this side. You can kind of see it there a little bit. All right. Yeah, so once again, right over there somewhere is where the canal would have been. So all you see now is traffic. So there's most likely nothing at all left over there. All right, so we'll continue on this way. So the next stop will be uh, Lock 51, which we can see. And where the Mule Bridge was that took the canal across the river here. Because remember those canal boats were towed by mules or horses. So if the canal is going to, so the canal and the canal boats are going to cross the river here, so do the mules. So they needed a mule bridge to take them across. Yeah, so it's called Stone Cliff Park, but you do, you do have the remains of like a, a stone quarry back here where they quarried out st stone for buildings and stuff. Stone Cliff Park. And here we got a memorial for Thomas Wayne Dugan. Memory of Colonel Thomas Wayne Dugan, United States Air Force. 
born in Reading, served in Vietnam. His plane went down December 13th, 1968. Listed as POW MIA. Yeah, so a memorial like that always kind of makes you sad a little bit. Because, you know, I mean, there's always death in war, but, you know, if, a, if, if there's a body and the body comes home and friends and family can bury it, you know, there's, a, there's closure to it, you know, you know. But in his situation, like it's POW, MIA, you know, prisoner of war, missing in action, you know, they don't know. They don't know what happened to him. You know, when his plane crashed, did he survive the initial crash? Did he parachute out? Did he die of his injuries? Was he captured? You know, you don't really know. Is he still over there? <laughs> anyway, that's nothing to do with the Union Canal, but it just makes you think a little bit. All right, we're getting the, into a, a nicer section of the trail here, away from that sketchier part. So this, they do call this the Union Canal Trail. Remember at this point, the Union Canal is actually on that side of the river. So that what we're walking on now is not the towpath trail where the mules would walk. But there, like I said, there is a bridge up here. There's the remains of Lock 51 and the mule bridge are up ahead. All right, so just up ahead is the modern pedestrian bridge, which takes you across the creek. Right around here was the mule bridge. I think there's some remnants of it up here. But there was also a dam in the creek here as well. Because the dam is what allowed, because remember the canal was on this side of the river, the south side of the river, came up this way. So they would have to dam the river up to create an area of slack water so the canal boats could come across. And then the canal would have been on this side then. But like I said, they needed a bridge to go across for the mules who were towing those canal boats. And the dam would also have provided water for the canal on that side, probably down to lock 52 and beyond. Yes, up ahead is that bridge, but they do have a little marker here for Mule Bridge and lock 51. Of course, the E just first the east, the east end of the canal. I take a little break on the bench there, but there's a feature right down below here. I'm not sure exactly where the dam is, or, or I mean the, the uh, Mule Bridge was because I'm not sure if it's where the modern pedestrian bridge is. Up there's up around the corners where Lock 51 is. But there is this, there's some interesting stonework right here. It looks an awful lot like a bridge abutment, in my opinion. So I don't know if that's, you can kind of see maybe the remnants of a dam right here that went across the river. I don't know. I'm not sure if, that's, if this is where the dam was or not. Just once again, there's that interesting feature right there, but let's walk on down here. Down here's Lock 51, which can clearly be seen if you walk right through it. Yes, there's the modern I kind of doubt that that's where the original one was, but maybe it was the original mule bridge. Yeah, because right down here is the lock. And right here, we're walking through it right here. So this right, this right here is the canal. The canal is now on this side of the river and we're walking through it, lock 51. So that's why I think the dam was behind us, because this lock would have opened up into that slack water area created by the dam so the barges could cross over there. That's my guess, at least. Yeah, but looking back this way, you can see some of the stonework. This is like the inner stonework. It's not the outer, nice dressed stonework that we call it sometimes. That was all probably carried off and used somewhere else. Although there might be a little bit of it left up here. Yeah, maybe there's a, a little bit right there. I don't know. 
But then, right there's the canal going that way. Yeah, so right there, like I said, the canal would go on this way. Up here is the towpath then. And looking back behind us is Lock 51. And if you watched my intro video where we filmed at Lock 47, restored lock, you could remember what that stonework looked like and all the wooden doors. That's what it would look like. Look, that's what it would look like back here. You know, I'm changing my tune too on that mule bridge. I'm starting to think that it was right here where the modern pedestrian bridge is, actually, because the bridge would have been right here where the lock was, because the mules would have had to go right along the lock too. So it makes so maybe that was maybe that's where that dam was down there at that stone thing. The mule bridge would have been up here. So I'm thinking that's the way it is. So the pedestrian bridge is where the original mule bridge is. I'm pretty sure. I was just rethinking this as I'm actually here now looking at it. That's, that's the way I think I went. Anyway, let, let's turn ourselves into mules here and show you how this would work. Give you a better picture. So we're, we're now mules or horses, whichever you, want to, whichever one you want to be. All right, so down there is looking at the towpath trail. And down there is the canal. So there's our canal boat. Remember, we're mules and we're attached to it via some ropes and stuff. We're pulling it along and we're headed this way. So let's pull this barge behind us and right here would be a set of wooden doors that would open up for us well not for the mules but for the boat but we're going to continue on up the towpath trail here pulling that barge and then that barge is going to get pulled into the lock down here right down let's go up here just a little bit more which is right down in here because it would be all nice with nice stone work now this brush would be here so our canal boat is now in there the wooden doors back there are going to close and then they're going to allow water actually I think we'll probably lower the water levels here maybe a little bit but anyway they're going to make the water level the same as what it is up here in the dam that's something that means lowering or raising the water level. Once that's done, the wooden doors up here at this end will open up and allow our boat to go up this way. So remember, this would be to be a larger amount of water up this way. I should probably flood it all in here. And as the mules, we're going to go across the bridge. So out there somewhere would be that dam. And a large area of slack water in here. And we're pulling that barge behind us. And we'll take it to the other side of the creek here, the river. Now here we are at the end of the bridge. Just remember over here, this will all be flooded, probably maybe up to the level up of the towpath here a bit. And then up this way, the canal would start again. But it's been kind of obliterated in this section. Yes, yeah, so once again, up there is our mule bridge. Of course, this area had been flooded in here. But eventually, the towpath would have come down here. And somewhere down in here, the canal would be again. But this is a park now. There's no, no evidence of the canal on this side anymore, as far as what I can tell. I was here before when I did start this series a couple years ago when I tried to. We'll go ahead and walk up this way a little bit since we're here. Oh, and you can be a human again if you want to. We'll trans no longer have to be a mule or a horse. But I'll go ahead and throw up that map again, showing you where this spot here is. Lock 51. Oh, and it, it's sometimes referred to as the Topahawken Creek Aqueduct. Although I'm not, there wasn't an actual aqueduct here. I think I filmed aqueducts in the past. Aqueducts are almost like bridges that carry the canal over another body of water, but I think there was actually a dam here, like I said, not, not an actual aqueduct. But I could be wrong about that, maybe. So yeah, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing left of the canal on this side, just pavement. And years ago, I did walk all the way up that way 
the uh, Nicholas Stoltzfus homestead is up that way too. So since I've been down that way in the past, I'm not going to go down there again. There is nothing to see. No remnants at all. That's where I encountered the homeless camps down that way. So we'll just go back. So I'm going to go back across the bridge and it'll pick up from there. We'll look for lock 50 then as we head towards Grings Mill. I'm not sure. Um, I don't. I, I, I parked at Grings Mill and came down this way. I didn't see anything. There was no, not even a sign for Lock 50, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to see anything or not. So we're making our way back to Grings Mill. And this is the towpath trail. Like this is what the mules would use. And right over here is the Union Canal. And the Tobacken Creek, Tobacken River is off to our left. All right, so up here's another marker for Fisher Homesteads and Waste Culvert. I think the Waste Culvert is actually up around the bend there, but there are some ruins on the other side of the river there. I'm not sure if you can really see them. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Back. And we can kind of make them back through the trees there. I often thought about trying to get back there, but I'm not sure if that's private property or what back there. Or how to get there. But Fisher Home said, we'll see. Maybe someday we'll get out there. I'm just going to find that culvert again. They call it a waste culvert. I think it was, when they say waste, I think they mean like extra water from the canal. Because right, the creek is right next to us and the canal is right on the other side of the trail here. I think the culvert connected the two, so maybe it carried extra waste water from the canal back to the creek. I think it was just down, down here somewhere if I remember correctly. So I think we can actually see the waste culvert up there. Let me zoom in on it. Pretty sure that's it up there. Yeah, right there it is. All right, so we're carefully making our way down there. Right there is the towpath trail. I get some old stone work for it there. I think that's it right there. Is it? Oh no, this is a modern one. I was wrong. This is not the one I want. Where is it? No, this is a modern concrete one. Ah, it's not the one we wanted. Well, I goofed on that one. There is, there is one along here. I was, when I filmed this years ago, I went to it. It wasn't a whole lot to see. Just kind of went under the, the trail a little bit. But anyway, yeah. Kind of looks like that, but take away the modern concrete and you have what it might look like. All right, well, so maybe it wasn't back more up where that original sign was. Hey, well, messed that up, but that's life. All right, let's get going. And I'm just taking a second look at it. It still looks pretty old. I mean, it's definitely concrete, but the stonework around it is old, so I'm not sure. But I, I do remember there being another one that didn't have any concrete on it, so. I think we passed it. All right, that's that's life. Let's get back up to the trail. All right, so I got a map here. This is the map from the brochure at Grings Mill. And some good news, windy here. There's a W right there. That W is right on that post up ahead. And that refers to that waste culvert, the waste weir. I just checked, it is down there. So we didn't miss it, so that'll be good. But then 
Of course, right here is Lock 50. Of course, we came from back here, Stone Cliff Park. There's the railroad. There's where Lock 52 would have been at one point. Then there is Lock 51. There's the Mule Bridge across. We came around. There's a W. So somewhere between that W post and Grings Mill is Lock 50. Like I said, I'm not sure if there's going to be anything left of it or not. I didn't see anything on the way here. But, uh, yeah, but let's, well, in a moment, we'll take a look at that waste weir, that waste culvert. And then we'll try to see if we can find anything of Lock 50 before we finish here at Grings Mill. Okay, so right there's the post. There's a W on it, a red W for the weir, the waste weir, which is pretty much right here. And it's right next to this. There's a picnic table here. Oh, picnic table. Like a bench, picnic bench to sit on. And, uh, like I said, we'll head down. I think we'll just head down here. And this is what I remember it looking like. Yeah, right there, it's old. Yeah, stone mine. We get situated here a little bit better. Yeah, so there it is. It actually doesn't go in that far. We'll walk up just a little bit more. There's lots of roots and stuff here. But yeah, there it is. Waste culvert. I guess you could hide in there a little bit. Forgot to bring my flashlight, as always. There you go. I did, I did, I, last time I was here, I did shine in. It shine in there. It doesn't really go back that far at all. So there it is. A little piece of history. So one last look, there it is, right by that post. All right, let's get back up to the, to the trail here. So I feel some raindrops coming. I'm trying to film this in between rain showers. Yeah, so Grings Mill is right ahead. And right behind us is that waste culvert. According to the map, Lock 50 should be right in here somewhere. Like I said, I don't really think there's maybe anything left. We'll see. So you can see this part. This would be the canal right here. Yeah, so somewhere in here, there's some cool old homes up there. Some stone homes. You know, a lot of these locks had a lock house where the Duke, because they would have men who would stay at these locks and operate them for the, the canal boats. There's stone work there, but that looks more like landscaping work. I don't know. You know, I'm not sure you know, how much, it's hard to say how much of this has changed over the years, but this obviously looks like a canal right here, or the B canal, but so I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in here. Yeah, so it has to be, it had to be right, right in here somewhere, originally. Because right up here is, right up there is Grings Mill, the bridge that goes across, so. Obviously there's nothing left of it. At all. I'm thinking maybe right here, that stone there, maybe that was it. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say it's, I'm gonna say it's where it was. <laughs> Gotta pick a spot. Nick is looking up, even that looks like an old stone house. Almost looks like, looks like that could have been a lock house. I'm not saying it is, but that's kind of what they would look like. Probably a bit smaller than that, quite a bit smaller, but. And here's Grings Mill. It's an interesting place too. Yeah, check out that, it's pretty cool. They have a whole Christmas display set up here too. But our uh, our canal continues on continues on that way, but that'll be for our next journey. We're gonna head up on the bridge here. So over there, that's the direction we came from. Like I said, Lock 50 is probably in there somewhere. 
is the bridge over the Topohawken here at Grings Mill. And in our next episode in this series, we'll be headed, we'll be headed that way. And Lock 49 is just down that way. And Lock 49 is supposed to be haunted. <laughs> so as always, thanks for coming along. And once again, if you have more information about some of the stuff I mentioned in this video, like I said, I'm not a know-it-all. I don't know everything. So if you have some extra information or things to add, go ahead and do so in the comments. All right, we'll see you on the next one as we go that way to the haunted lock. All right, thanks for watching.